This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. Hey guys, it's Max. Today, we are gonna be comparing two excellent laptops, and this is gonna be a tough comparison. We have the 13-inch MacBook Pro, and we have the brand new 2020 Dell XPS 13 9300. And if you wanna see which one of these you should buy, we're gonna make it easier for you. Or if you just wanna see how much Dell has stepped up their game, make sure you guys watch. We're gonna look at a wide variety of things such as the displays, the speakers, the webcams, keyboards, CPU and GPU performance, and more. Let's start out with the build quality and design. The first thing I wanna show you guys is these hinges. Dell finally kicked it up. We have an easy one-handed open. And as you guys just saw right there, we finally have Windows Hello Unlock back in the display, but the camera is in the correct position. I really wish Apple would give us Face ID. Of course, we do have Touch ID. It's easy to log in. You can use your Apple Watch. The Dell also has Touch ID, but I just love the simplicity of that. You open it up and it's there pretty much instantly ready to go. Now let's close these up and look at the exteriors. Now this is where Dell really excels at we have this super slim design not as wide not as long it's very compact even though the display is identical as far as sizing as far as thickness they are very very similar right now this isn't sitting on the table so you don't see the feet but thickness is very similar this is sloped more like the MacBook Pro it's a slate design so it makes it slightly more comfortable for your wrists when you're typing as far as ports we have two Thunderbolt 3 ports on my model of the MacBook Pro, and all of the Dells only have two Thunderbolt 3 ports, but they also have a headphone jack like the MacBook and this micro SD card slot. If you buy the more expensive 13-inch MacBook Pro that comes starts at $1,800, you will get four Thunderbolt 3 ports, and that's something that you don't get with the Dell XPS. If you get the most expensive one, you still only have two. Now, as far as the build quality, this is all one piece that is milled out. It's very rigid, the build quality is very good. On the inside, we have the soft touch material that does leave fingerprints more easily than the MacBook Pro, but it still, still feels nice. It's very rigid and I have no complaints about the build quality. Now, personally, I do think that the MacBook Pro does feel a little bit more premium just because I like the all aluminum design, but both are very, very good. Now, as we open these guys up, and you guys see them side by side, this is where the Dell really stands out. The whole frame is smaller and that leads to these incredibly thin bezels, not only on the sides, also on the top, even though the webcam, which we'll test in just a bit, is a pretty good one. The MacBook Pro has these much larger bezels, and I really hope that Apple is gonna step that up. And then when we look further, we notice how the display sits lower, and Dell got rid of that XPS Dell logo. They're saying, hey, let's just make this thing look sleek and really nice and make it smaller. It looks great. Uh, the MacBook Pro, I don't think Apple's gonna get rid of that logo, but hopefully they fill in the screen maybe a little bit in the future. But this definitely takes the win as far as just the overall design. Now, uh, the keyboard goes all the way to the edges. We don't have any speaker grills over here like we do on the MacBook Pro. And then, uh, as far as the top portion here, we have standard keys here where Apple has this uh, touch bar. Um, I don't know, some people hate it, some people like it. I use it for the things I need it for, the standard things, but I rarely use shortcuts and stuff like that. There, I just can't get used to it. There's keyboard shortcuts you could do instead. So you guys let me know your thoughts on the touch bar. Now, if we go lower here, you guys see the track pads. Macro Pros is much larger. It does feel better, way better. It uses magnets, it doesn't actually click. Dell has actually improved theirs compared to last year. It is definitely an above average touchpad. It's usable, but it's not as good. Now the tables turn and flip if we start talking about the keyboards. We have the butterfly keyboard over here, much less travel. It is more clicky and it just doesn't feel as good as this Dell XPS keyboard. Once again, this is another area Dell stepped up from last year. We have more travel than last year. It just feels nicer overall. If you're typing a lot, I would really go for this Dell XPS. Now, before we compare the speakers and the webcams along with performance and things like that, let me give a shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace. If you've been thinking about making your own website, now is the time and Squarespace is the best way to go. You can make a great looking website with literally no web making experience like we did. 
It doesn't matter if you want a portfolio, a blog, e-commerce, or anything else, you just choose a template and customize blocks of text and images. It's incredibly simple, affordable, and ours has been bringing in new clients for over two years now thanks to its built-in SEO tools. Start your free two-week no credit card required trial by going to squarespace.com slash maxtech or by clicking on the custom link down below. And when you're ready to launch, save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Now let's talk about the displays themselves. This is where the XPS gets very complicated. Now with the 13-inch MacBook Pro, we have their standard retina display with just over 4 million pixels. We have 500 nits of brightness and we have a nice anti-reflectivity coating. It's a great display, I have no complaints. With this version of the Dell XPS, I have the 4K touchscreen display. It is actually slightly higher than 4K because it is thankfully 16 by 10. That was a great choice and all of the displays have 500 nits of brightness. Thank you, Dell. That is a great improvement. And they have also improved their coatings on the display. It's not as good as the Mac Pros, but they have improved it, which is great. Now, this is where it gets complicated. If you buy the base model, you get a non-touchscreen 1080p display, and then you just you can't compare between these two. You could definitely tell the difference in detail, and I, I wouldn't love that display. If you spend 100 bucks more, you can get a touchscreen, and you spend more, you can get a non-touchscreen 4K, and then if you get the higher end one, the highest end, we have a 4K touchscreen. Now the Dell does do 100% of sRGB, which is enough for most people, but if you're a professional, the MacBook Pro will actually show a, the full range of DCI P3 colors, which is great for HDR video editing, if you wanna do high-end raw photo editing, and here you guys can see that the De Dell cannot show that shade of red, whereas the MacBook Pro can. Overall, if you want the best visual experience, the Dell does look nicer for 4K video, it does HDR, uh, but I have to give the win to the MacBook Pro for the simplicity and the color accuracy. Now, I also wanna talk about Wi-Fi. I'm playing back videos right here. The Dell has Wi-Fi 6, the MacBook Pro has Wi-Fi 5. Now, it may not make a difference to you, but I upgraded my router, and then the toughest parts of my house, the Dell will get to about 170, 180 megabit per second out of 250, whereas the MacBook Pro will get slightly under 100. So you definitely have an improvement if you do have one of those new routers. Now let's compare the webcam and the microphone quality. This is what you get from the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And this is what you get with the new Dell XPS. It's also a 720p webcam. You let me know which one looks better and sounds better down in the comment section below. Now it's time to compare the speakers. Dell definitely stepped it up for this year. Thank you, Dell. They went from one watt per speaker, now up to two and a half watts, which is excellent. And I'm just gonna set these up right in front of me, one by one, and cut between them. You guys put on your best pair of headphones. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Keep in mind, you're listening through a microphone. It's been compressed, so I'll give you guys my opinion. The Dell XPS actually peaked the decibel louder, surprisingly, but at the low end, it actually lowered the volume a little bit to make sure it doesn't distort. The MacBook Pro stays consistent, and overall, it is louder. The sound quality is better, and the fourth Thunderbolt 3 port model also has better speaker. So either way, the MacBook Pro does take the win, but compared to last year where the Dell XPS got completely slaughtered, Dell has made a good improvement, and for most people, these speakers are more than good enough. Now, let's go ahead and talk about something else where the Dell has a lead, and that is you can actually swap out the SSD. So here's some shots for you guys. If you want to, you can pull that out if you get the base 256 gig model. And the base one is actually a good fast SSD. I have the 512 right over here, and you can pop in a one terabyte or a two terabyte. That is excellent. With the MacBook Pro, uh, not only is the RAM soldered like it is on the XPS, but your SSD is soldered. So you have to make sure you make a good choice out of the get-go. Now, finally, let's talk about performance. All of the current 13-inch MacBook Pros use Intel's eighth generation processors, but good variants of them, which make it stay kind of 
competitive, whereas all of the new XPSs use the 10th generation processors, two generations newer, they are 10 nanometer processors, which help with efficiency. And if we compare the base model i5s, uh, you're looking at, we have 907 single core compared to 1220. That is a massive difference. In multi-core, we have about 300 points or so more score with the base model XPS. Um, now, the multi-core doesn't matter that much. They both have eight gigs of RAM, but the single core, that really makes it noticeable, makes it nice and snappy for day-to-day -day simple tasks, opening up different apps. The 10 generations are really good there. Now, as far as the graphics, if you get the base models, um, you're actually looking at very similar performance. We have 5704 compared to 58. 48. That's because the base model uses the G1 graphics, which are not really that powerful. Now with the MacBook Pros, if you go ahead and step up to the $1,800 model or even pay extra for their higher end ones, the performance doesn't get that much better. Multi-core gets actually closer to this, but still not as good as the base model. Single core is still far off. And on the graphics front, we go from about 5,700 up to about 7,700 or so, a decent bump, but we typically don't tell people to spend the extra money. Whereas with the Dell, when you go for the i7, you not only get better CPU performance, as you guys see here we jump up to 4700 and the single core is still kind of similar you also get much better graphics performance we have 10,000 420 and that means that a lot of different apps that are starting to use graphics acceleration it helps out there and if you want to game this graphics card in here even though it's not meant for gaming you can get about 50 percent higher frame rates for example in unigen heaven it did quite a bit better than the macbook pro now let's go ahead and talk about prices now this is where things also get a little bit interesting the mac pro has been out for a while you can get some good discounts on it whereas the dell it is just coming out and there are no discounts but in a few months there will be i'll have links to both in a video description so you guys can compare the current prices when you guys are watching the video we're looking at the regular prices the xps seems like a better value and then of course we are going to have some sales on that after a few months but keep in mind there are also sales where you can actually get um, the higher end four thunderbolt port model for a lower price than the xps with the best discounts from B and H. So it really is kind of a wash price wise um, because of the discounts that are now available for the MacBook Pro. And overall, if I had to decide which one of these would I buy, um, honestly, for me, you guys know I love Mac OS and that keeps me tied into the Mac ecosystem. Uh, the Dell, I really like the keyboard. Um, the speakers are improved. I like the improved display. Um, all those things have been improved. I love that you can swap out the SSD. I like the extra performance. And just overall as a laptop, I think this gives you a better value in that way if you don't care about which operating system you're using. The graphics for gaming, you can actually do some light gaming on it as well. It is an excellent laptop, nice, thin, slim. It is a very good laptop. So for now, this is the better laptop, but if you need Mac OS, you're gonna be sticking with a Micro Pro, and that is me. When we get a new 14-inch Micro Pro, if that comes out, we will do another comparison. Make sure you guys are subscribed by clicking that little circle above. And if you guys wanna see another video on the XPS or the Micro Pros, you guys can click right over there. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.